In this exercise, we learn to construct a circuit schematic which we can use to simulate a slotted line. So the first thing we need to do, as usual, is go to Project Options, pick a frequency, we'll just go for one single frequency this time, so I'll click single point, click apply, and that's done. And then go to Global Units, change your frequency to gigahertz. Uh, we won't be using inductance or capacitance, where we'll keep the length to millimeters. We then go to Circuit Schematics, right-click, New Schematic, we'll call it Slotted Line, and then we'll press Ctrl L to source our components, in this case, Transmission Line in physical form. You can place one, uh, more than one of one component by just clicking pressing Ctrl C and then Ctrl V. Now if I connect these two transmission lines by a wire, the simulator will consider them as one single transmission line. So each one is 10 millimeters long, but from this point to this point the simulator will consider this transmission line as a one entity of 20, 20 milli millimeters long. So this is very important to remember for what we're going to do shortly. The simulator will consider a transmission line connected by a wire on the schematic as a one single transmission line. We know these continuities. In a slotted line measurement, you are moving your cursor up and down the slotted line and you're trying to find the maxima and minima of your standing wave. With this simulator you can do a bit more than that. You can actually measure directly the voltage and current at a specific point. To do so you can go to the elements tab, go to measuring device and then pick a voltmeter and place it on one side of this line. You need to connect the voltmeter to the ground to give a reference and you're done. The other element that you will need is a current meter which will go in series with the lines. It's called I meter. You just pick it and place it like so. We go back to the project tab now and to global definitions and we can define two variables one as the total length of the two lines combined let's say 100 millimeters and then a second variable which will help us change the relative length of the two sections as I will show in a minute so L is the total length of the two transmission lines combined and X represents the position along the, uh, the line that we want to try and probe. So we go back to our schematic and now the length of this line we can assign to X and the length of this line to L minus X. This way, as X increases, I am basically moving along the line in this direction. And as X decreases, I'm moving along the line in this direction. But the total length of the line remains the same. So the total length of this line plus this line is still the same, and it's L. Now, in as much as it can appear that there is a discontinuity here, there is no discontinuity. The, the line from here to there is one uniform, continuous transmission line. This is just a small trick that allows you to probe the voltage and current along the line at a position X. In order to measure uh, voltages and current, uh, we need to use a different type of port, a different type of input on this side of our circuit. We can find that under Elements, Ports, 
harmonic balance and then you pick port 1 harmonic balance is a specific type of simulation that allows you to simulate a circuit at the fundamental frequency and the harmonics however we're not going to go into the specifics of that method in details uh, just yet uh, the only thing you need to know is that this represents a uh, generator with a specific power level, in this case 0 dBm. You can change the power if you so wish, but in this case we just want to show how current and voltage change along the line. Uh, changing the uh, input power will change the magnitude of, of voltage and current, but in a proportional manner. So it will not change the relationship between the voltage and current themselves. So we've got our generator with a 50 ohm impedance. We've set the power level out of the generator. We said we need to use a harmonic balance port for this type of simulation. Uh, we've got a 50 ohm transmission line of length L and we are probing the voltage and current along that line at position X. Now what is needed on this end is a termination for the line. We can just press Control L, type in RES and get our resistor, our terminating resistor. Ground it and assign a value to it. We'll start with 50 ohms so that the line is matched. Now we go back to our project tab we go to graphs, new graph, choose a rectangular graph, we call it voltage and current. Right click on the graph, add new measurement. We need to go to the nonlinear measurements this time, pick the voltage and then VCOMP. VCOMP allows you to see the voltage at a specific harmonic component. Now, in our case, we'll be just looking at the fundamental. So, the schematic from which the data comes from is slotted line, that's set to the correct thing. Uh, the measurement component will be your voltmeter, so set that to V meter VM1. And the harmonic component will be 1 since we're looking at the fundamental. Then click apply. Now, you also want to see what happens to the current. So, you can click on current, choose ICOMP similar concept to the um, BCOMP. You've got the data source name as slot in line, the uh, measurement component as your I meter, that's correct. Put the uh, money component to one, instead of looking at the fundamental, click apply, and then OK. Now we can simulate and see what happens. OK, you can see now that at two gigahertz, uh, your voltage is somewhere uh, in this region and your current is up here. Now your current is in milliamps and your voltage is in volts as a default as you can see from your project options here. You can see that the current is in milliamps and the voltage is in volts. Now you can see also that there is a difference, quite a significant difference between the current value and the voltage value and so it's difficult to display them on the same graph. But what you can do is right click on the graph, go to properties, and then on your axis uh, you, can, you can fiddle around to get a, a, a better graph where you can visualize things more clearly. So look at the left axis, that's the left vertical axis. You can take the auto limits off, choose a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 10 and also untick the auto scale while tuning. The problem with that is that if we start then tuning our termination impedance um, and the uh, value of the current and voltage change, the, the scale, the axis will be scaled up and down all the time and it may make things difficult to visualize. So it's better if you're doing that sort of thing to take the auto scale off while you're tuning, set a range which will um, encompass all the values you may encounter and leave it at that. Now let's also set a right axis so we can display the two quantities voltage and current on the same graph 
but it would be referring to different axes, and that way the difference in the relative difference in magnitude between them won't make a, won't have won't create a problem with visualization. So let's take the auto limits off here as well. Now the voltage is much smaller, so let's say that we go between zero and one. We don't want auto scale while tuning, and that is done. Let's apply. Now you go to measurements. Now you have to assign the correct axis to the correct measurement. So for the uh, voltmeter, we've uh, set a scale on the right axis. So you click on voltmeter and write one, and then click apply. And then you click on I meter and left one and click apply, and then okay. Now, if you look at what's happened, you've got the current on the left axis and you can see it is around 6 point something milliamps and you've got the voltage on the right axis so your voltage is just above 0.3 volts now you may want to simulate uh, what you did in the lab with the slotted line and move your cursor up and down in order to do that what you need to change is this variable variable x now one mistake that you must not make is that if you've defined a variable as the parameter for one specific component, you can't tune it directly from the schematic. If I click on the tuning tool here and try to click there, you can see that this is not changing to a blue color because this is the not, not the right place where you can actually decide to have the variable tuned. So I'll just press escape and go to global definitions. Here you've got X, which is where it is declared. You've got to click on the Tune tool, click on X on here, and now you've made it tunable. So that's an important thing to remember, that when you have something in global definitions, even if it's in your schematic, to be able to tune it, you have to use the Tune tool within the global definition screens, not within the schematic. So now if we go back to our graphs, voltage and current, and we open the tune. We can see that um, X can be changed and we can just slide the slider up and down. We can also increase the range, for example, to 100 millimeters, which will allow us to go through the whole line. And you can see that there's absolutely no change. Voltage and current remain the same because we've terminated our line where it needs characteristic impedance. So as you move along the line, you see absolutely no variation of voltage and current. Now, if we go back to our schematic and we mismatch the line, and we put 25 ohms here, for example, and re-simulate, we go back to our graph, now we can just um, move the slider once again up and down the line uh, by changing the value of the variable x and we can see what happens. You can see that as the voltage increases the current decreases and vice versa. When you increase the current then the voltage decreases. Now, another interesting thing to actually evaluate is the impedance at that point. So, can we do that? Yes, of course we can do that. We just close the tuning tool and we explore a different section of the simulator called Output Equations. Now, you just click on this button up here, Output Equation, and the same screen opens up as it would for a new measurement on a graph. So you can choose your current, iComp, from I meter 1 with a harmonic index of 1, i.e. the fundamental, and that will be exactly the same point that you've seen on the graph. The only difference is that you're going to store it in a variable rather than plotting it on the graph. We call the variable current. And we just place it there. We can do the same with the voltage. So again, click on output equation, go to voltage, V comp, 
choose your bolt meter harmonic index of one and click and then give the variable a name record it to voltage just to be creative we put that there and now what is your impedance at the very point in the line is the ratio of voltage and current now you can insert an equation be careful this is not an output equation because it's not coming from your simulation we can call this impedance equals voltage divided by current so we're saying that we're declaring a new variable called impedance and its value its voltage this is component here and uh, divided by current which is this component here and this come from the simulation now we can go back to our graphs select a new graph a rectangular one or a smith chart we can go for a rectangular one for now we call it impedance we right click choose add a new measurement and now on the list of measurement types pick output equations now under this pull down menu equation name you see you've got current voltage and impedance but you've already plotted current and voltage if you pick either one of them you would have an identical graph to what you had before we we'll just pick impedance click on apply and OK and now we simulate again you can see that the, uh, the simulator now has calculated the value of the impedance at that specific point where we were measuring at that specific value of X now if we close all the tabs here apart from the two graphs that we are interested in the one with voltage and current and the one with impedance we can also ask the simulator to tile um, these two windows horizontally like so and now we can open the tuner again and slide up and down our slotted line as we did before let's say from 0 to 100 so that we can span the whole line and we can see what happens you can see that the voltage, the current is decreasing now and the voltage is increasing and so you get a higher impedance as you go the other way around as the current increases and the voltage decreases you get a lower impedance again you can see now in the top graph that sometimes it slides up and down because um, the auto tuning um, the auto scaling while tuning is, is enabled but if we go to properties on this graph axis and we set our own limits from 0 to 100 and we tick off uh, out, allow auto scale while tuning and apply then we shouldn't see any sliding you can just see a nice graph going up and down and you can see and as I said when your current goes up your impedance goes down when your voltage goes up your impedance goes up accordingly so this concludes our tutorial on uh, slotted lines uh, this should allow you to um, have uh, enough information on how to set up a simulation um, to be able to play around with transmission lines and um, experiment.